SDI, Strategic Defense Initiative, or sometimes known as Global Defense, was developed and released by Sega in 1987. In this action shooter, you control a satellite that must destroy enemies by moving across her over them and firing the satellite's weapons. The arcade version features a joystick to control the satellite and a trackball to control the crosshair. Each stage is split into two sections, offensive mode and defensive mode. During offensive mode, the player engages a number of enemies with the aim of destroying all of them without the satellite being destroyed by the enemy. Should the player destroy all enemies during offensive mode, they are awarded 20,000 bonus points and begin the next stage on the offensive. If any enemies evade destruction during the offensive mode, the player must complete defensive mode, where they are tasked with protecting the homeland from incoming warheads. Completion of the defensive mode advances the player to the next stage, where they go on the offensive again. Now isn't this a nice surprise? The Amiga version, while not looking as pretty as the arcade, is actually pretty good. It was developed by Software Studios and features some pretty good tunes in places. The controls have been altered from the arcade original, as you'd expect, but they are still pretty well done. Using a mouse, you can move the satellite by holding down the left button. Holding down the right mouse button will allow you to move the cursor and fire. This control method works rather well. The stages don't really follow the layout of the arcade and do take liberties at times, but still, it's nothing to take away from the fun factor. Overall, a pretty nice port. Another pretty good conversion, and one that may be better than the Amiga, depending upon your preference. Both this and the Amiga suffer from slowdown, and both look relatively the same, and both play exactly the same. The area of difference is in the sound. The Amiga has far better sounding music, in most people's opinion. However, the Atari ST has music with sound effects. Something which really does make a difference, so it really boils down to which sound style you like best. Let's move on to the 8-bit port, starting with the ZX Spectrum. This version isn't very good. The stage layouts are nothing like the arcade version and extremely short. We can't even move our ship to the bottom of the screen during the defensive sections. Then we have a lack of music and pretty awful sound effects. The only plus point is the control system. It's similar to that of the 16-bit versions. 
Holding down the fire button shoots and allows for movement of the cursor. Letting go of fire will allow you to move the satellite about. After the very colourful loading screen, I was expecting this to be quite nice, but sadly, it's just another shitty ZX Spectrum port that makes no use of the Amstrad's capabilities at all. Now this is more like it. The Commodore 64 port really shows how crappy the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad CPC ports are. While this may not be perfect, with its questionable collision detection and lack of music, it really does show that the 8-bit home macros can replicate the arcade experience somewhat. It's easy to see why the Commodore 64 was the system of choice when it came to home computer gaming. Now it's time to take a look at the console ports. This was one of the Master System's early games, yet it still manages to look pretty nice. It also has a cool FM rendition of the arcade's music if played on a Japanese Master System. Just like the Commodore 64 version, this port has questionable collision detection at times, although maybe not as bad as the C64. The controls have also been changed a little for the Master System, since it has two fire buttons. Button 1 allows the satellites to be moved if held down, while holding button 2 down allows for the crosshair to be moved and also fires. The overall difficulty level of this version is quite high, but still not too high to put you off trying to reach that next stage. And let's finish up the ports with the PlayStation 2 Sega Ages version, which comes on the same disc as Quartet. This port was made by M2, and as you'd expect, it's arcade perfect. 
The port allows you to play all four variations of the Japanese arcade ROM as well as the Mass System version complete with FM sound. The arcade control system is ported over quite faithfully too. The left analog stick controls the satellite while the right stick controls the target. And let's take a look at all those versions of Strategic Defense Initiative running side by side. <laughs> 